expensive, had to leave LA So I got into my car and I went away to the big estate Playing poker every day Going all in with these fish like I'm mad and all you can eat buffet We finally have time to explore Austin, we head over to Zilker Park where they're setting up for Austin City Limits, check it out. We scalp a ticket off a dude outside the festival and find ourselves inside. I love the vibe in here, people are stoked and the city looks beautiful at sunset. When the sun goes down, the energy turns up, we head over to Jack Harlow's set where I meet up with my buddy Zach from Pepperdine. It's then finally time for one of my favorite artists, Billie Eilish. Before poker vlogging, I used to travel the festival circuit as a photographer. Here's a few shots I took of Billie and others at Coachella. She put on a great show and the crowd is always amazing for her. We then head directly over to the lodge where we put in 4 hours of poker and end up profiting $1,005. We come back the next day and put our name on the list for the 1-3. In the meantime, we play 1-2 and lose $180. Our name finally gets called for 1-3, we're in for $18.20. First hand of the night, we look down at Ace Jack Offsuit from the cutoff. The $10 straddle's on and I pop it up to $35. The big blind and the straddle both put in the call, so we're off to an ace high flop, which comes ace queen four with two spades. When the action checks to me, I go for a C bet here of $45, looking to get value from the flush draws and straight draws. Unfortunately, both players fold, but we're gonna start the session up $150 and we're on to the next hand when we look down at queen deuce of clubs. Middle position opens it up to $15 and the small blind puts in the call. I'm in the big blind. I'm gonna defend this here for Israeli Ron. I put in the call, so going four ways to the flop. Flop comes queen, deuce, four, bang, we flop two pair. It's a pretty draw heavy board as ace three, three, five, and any diamonds are gonna have a very strong draw. The action checks over to the button who bets out for $40. The small blind puts in the call and obviously I'm not going anywhere. I could consider a raise as well, but in this instance I just decided to flat the $40 and we're going three ways to the turn which comes the jack of spades. Small blind now checks their action over to me and I'm going to go for value and protect my hand. I bet out for $80. The button's not looking to go anywhere just yet. He tosses in four chips. That's a call. Small blind gets out of the way and we're off to the river in a $340 pot. River doesn't change pretty much anything. It comes a seven of clubs. Action's on me, and I think we could go for another street of value. It's unlikely that the opponent has a hand like queen four, pocket deuces, pocket fours. So I'm going to go for a third street of value, and I bet $130, around one third the size of the pot. Button pretty quickly folds, so we're two for two here, up 380 on the session. This next hand is absolutely insane. We're on the button, and as you can see, my chips are in a rack. Side note, I never advise anybody to play out of a rack. Seems like whenever you do so, you end up getting stacked, but my name got called for the main game. There's two tables of 1-3 here, and I'm up next, so I was racking up my chips, and I told the dealer not to deal me in for that exact reason, but he did, and we looked down at pocket kings. Oh boy, are we gonna get stacked here like it always happens? Another side note is $500 of my chips is already on the next table because I was in the process of moving. So take that with a grain of salt as well. $6 straddle is on. There's two calls to me and obviously I'm popping it up. Not looking to go three or four ways to a flop. I make it $35. I said I didn't want to go four ways to a flop, but that's exactly what happens when three players put in the call. So around 140 in the pot, here comes a flop. Flop comes king, king, queen, bang, we flop quads. Absolutely insane here. The only way we can lose this hand is if the other guy has like a royal draw, like ace jack of hearts or ace ten of hearts. But with quads here, we're feeling absolutely amazing about our hand. When the action checks to me, I check behind looking for the opponents to catch up. Obviously, they can only call with a queen here or pocket pair. So we check behind and the ten of hearts peels off on the turn. Is this a setup here? Does the opponent have ace jack of hearts? And we're going to get cooler. Royal flush over quads. The middle position now bets out for $25. When the action's on me, we can't be scared of exactly one holding, so I raise him up to $105. He's not going anywhere. He pretty quickly puts in the call, so we're going off to the river. River comes the ace of hearts, so now the jack of hearts is gonna have a royal. 
what the heck is going on here? Could our flop quads possibly go down in flames? It's not PLO, you don't have to use two cards in your holding. So if you had a hand like Queen Jack with the Jack of Hearts, he now has a royal flush and our kings are no good. To make matters more interesting, he doesn't check it over to us like I would expect him to do. He leads out for $100. It's definitely indicative of a hand that has the Jack of Hearts in it. He has around 250 left in his stack. And when he leads out for $100, he has around 250 left in his stack behind the hundred dollars that he already bet on the river i think a call is probably the best play here but in the moment i had quads i wasn't really too scared of the jack of hearts and i told the table afterwards because i'm a youtuber if you had the jack of hearts i could title this video quads versus royal flush i mean how sick is that so i rip it all in for 350 dollars effective before putting in the call he turns over an ace thinks about it for another 30 seconds and then pushes his chips forward indicating a call i turn over my quads and he can't believe it he mucks his cards that's no bueno for him. We're going to take down this $1,150 pot with quads. Who knows? I may still title this video quads versus a royal. So I had to tell uh, Alex, the floor guy here at the lodge, that last hand. So basically what happened was I was racking my chips up to go to the must move, right? So I had like half my chips in a rack, which I never play out of the rack. That freaking sucks. The other half of my chips were already on the other table. I had like 600 bucks on the table. I'm like, oh crap, she deals me in. Let's just see if it's aces or kings. It's kings. Straddle, wow. straddle on. I raise it up to 35, get three callers. Flop comes king, king, queen, two hearts. I flop quads. No, you don't. Yeah. And then me, because I'm so excited, I'm, I asked the dealer, I'm like, okay, so what, so what happens? Because half my chips are on the other table. Are they in play? And she's like, yeah, they are in play, but actually you do cover the table, so we don't even need them. I checked I check the flop. The turn comes to 10 of hearts, and some dude bets 25. I raise 105. He calls. The river comes to ace of hearts, four liner to the royal. Oh, oh. The guy leads out for a hundred. He has three, three, 250, 300 behind. Okay. And I'm thinking like, okay, I mean, I have quads and it's a four liner to a royal. I raised him on the turn. He bets out on the river. He probably has a jack of hearts. Then without me doing anything, so I'm thinking I'm smiling. He turns over the ace. He says, this is the best card I have. So then me, I'm like, okay, I don't want to just call here. Let's just get it in. I have quads, right? If I lose, I'll just title the video something funny. Like I lost royal to quads. I get it all in and he doesn't show the jack of hearts. So we scoop. Nice man. Yeah. Way to go. Isn't that crazy? That's quite a, it's quite a story. After that mess of a hand, we finally make it over to the main game. We look down at King Jack offsuit and I raise it up to $15 from the hijack. The button puts in the call and the big blind now goes for a raise to $45. Myself and the button both think that's a great price. We put in the call and we're going three ways in between two opponents to a flop, which comes King 5-9 with two hearts. Big blind strangely checks it over to me. I check it to the button who checks behind and we see the deuce of spades on the turn. And the big blind checks to me for a second time now. I think we have the best hand and I need to go for value. I lead out for $60. The button gets out of the way, which is good news for us because no matter what, we'll be in position. The big blind puts in the call. That's in fact what happens and we're off to the river. Looking to fade pretty much a heart if we're already ahead. That happens. The 10 of clubs peels off. The only hand that's going to get there is queen jack and we block that having the jack of diamonds in our hand. Big blind checks it over to me for a third time, and I go for one last street of value, $70 into the $255 pot. If he has a hand like king eight, nine jack, something of that nature, we're gonna try to milk him for 70 more dollars, but he has some evil intentions here. He raises it up to $250. He's representing a nutted hand, but what are the hands that would do this here? Pocket kings, I'm not too sure if it would play this way, considering there's two hearts on the flop and on the turn, so we probably would have gone for a check raise on one of those streets. Additionally, we have the king of clubs in our hands so we block that hand pocket nines pocket fives would probably do the exact same as kings so i think really the only hand he's representing is queen jack and like i said we block that having the jack of diamonds in our hand Hands that he would do this with as a bluff would obviously be the heart draws and other Miss Broadways like Ace Queen, Ace Jack. So when he raises it up to $250, I'm looking to put in the call here. I'm trying to play better poker and I don't want to be bluffed here on the river when I go for the second street. I cut out some green chips and ultimately find a call. If he's going to have Queen Jack here, he's just going to get my money. But it looks like our studying has paid off a little bit here. He turns over Ace Eight of Hearts, which is one of the hands I was putting him on here. If he was bluffing, great call my me, and I'm going to scoop down that $755 pot. I think a few months ago or even a year ago, I definitely would have folded here to a raise, just expecting him to have a much better hand than us. But when you really think about it, he can't have kings, five, or nine, so he's really representing queen, jack. 
And that's going to do it for us. We take down the $755 pot. Quick shout out to my sponsor, Poker Bros. If you guys are interested in playing on there, message Club Admin 73 He'll get you into my private game. Let's get back into the hands. We're feeling great about the session so far. We're up over $1,200, and we look down at King 8 of Hearts from the big blind. Under the gun pops it up to $15, and it folds back around to me, and I defend my big blind. I put in the call. Pop comes 836 Rainbow, and I check it over to the under the gun position, who goes for a C bet of $20. I could go for a check raise here, looking to fold out his ace king, king queen type hands, but I just decided to put in the call. I'm going heads up to the turn. Turn now comes the eight of spades. Bang, we turn trips. I check it over to the opponent for a second time, and he decides to go for another bet of $50. I would expect him to check behind here with those hands like ace jack through ace king. So when he goes for a bet here for a second time, I'm putting him on an over pair, pocket nines, pocket tens, pocket jacks, something of that nature. Don't really expect him to have too many eights in his range. And if he does, it's going to be a hand like seven eight suited, eight nine suited, eight ten suited. And obviously we have that dominated with king eight. I think a raise is probably the best play here, but I just decide in the moment to put in the call and we're off to the river, which comes the ten of hearts. We still should have the best hand here. Here, unless he had a hand like pocket tens or 10 eight not looking for this river to get checked behind i decide that the best play for me to do here is to lead out here for 150 dollars my logic is if he had a hand like jacks queens or kings he might just check behind as the board is pretty draw heavy ace king ace queen will probably also check behind so i bet out for 150 dollars looking to get value from some of those holdings in hindsight it also kind of looks like i could have a missed spade draw something like ace five of spades might play this way and just lead out here looking to get a a fold from the under the gun position player well we got ourselves into a weird situation either he thinks we're bluffing or he has a better hand than us he puts out one purple chip but indicates to the dealer a raise that's five hundred dollars and it's 350 more dollars to me thinking about the hands he could have here obviously he's either putting us on a miss spade draw and just going for another bluff Either he has a hand like 810, pocket sixes, pocket tens that got lucky on the river. But I'm feeling good about my river call in the previous hand. And I think this is another situation here where he might just be putting some pressure on us, not expecting us to have a very nutted type hand ourselves. So I put in a stack of green. That's $500. I indicate a call to the dealer. Fortunately, the under the gun position player turns over 10 8 of clubs. He got there on the river. Come on, dealer. We had a lock on this hand. King 8 of arts was going to scoop this. I guess he just got lucky there on the river. Maybe I could find a fold there for $350 more, but I talked myself into a call. I show the table King 8 of hearts for the best hand on the turn. Some of our profits going the way of the under the gun player. We're down to $515 of profit on the session. Looking for revenge from that last hand, we look down at ace queen of clubs from middle position and I raise it up to $15. Played on my left puts in the call and the cutoff now goes for a sizable raise to $60. I put in the call and the hijack does as well. Three ways to the flop. Flop comes 984 with one club. We have two overs and some backdoor ideas. And the action checks over to the initial raiser. The cutoff, he goes for a C bet here of $80. Nothing for me to do other than fold here. I guess we could go for a check raise representing pocket eights, pocket nines. But thought I'd throw this hand in here for you guys as some of you comment that you want to see the hands that I play a flop to and then end up folding. Well, this is one of them. On to the next hand, we pick up a better hand, ace king of hearts from the small blind. Early position raises it up to $30. The cutoff puts in the call. Obviously, no brainer decision here. I'm going to go for the three bet. I size up for $125. The early position initial raiser puts in the call. The player in between us, the cutoff gets out of the way, going heads up out of position to the flop. Flop comes seven, six, four. No bang here on this flop, but we do have two overs and a backdoor heart draw. I decide to go for a C bet here of $80. Looking to represent all the over pairs in my range, that would go for a C bet here as well. The opponent fancies something on this flop. He puts in $80, so we're off to the turn, which comes the nine of diamonds. If I had a hand like pocket tens through pocket aces, I would go for a sizable bet here on the turn. So for that reason, I picked this as a good spot to do so. I bet out for 270 $75 with just my ace high. If we get called here on the turn, we're in a lot of trouble. He's obviously going to have a very strong hand, but I expect him to fold a large portion of the time here. A large portion of the time is not this time though. He puts in $275. Red flags everywhere. This is not a great spot for us to be in. A thousand dollar pot with just ace high. Come on dealer. A king or an ace on the river does not come. 
The Eight of Heart peels off and the action's on me. We get called on the turn. My plan was to check it over to him. I'm not going to blast off the rest of my chip stack to an opponent who probably has a set, a straight, or an overpair. So when I check it over to him, he pretty quickly checks behind, not expecting my ace high to be good. I turn it over and he turns over pocket queens. Interesting decision for him not to go for the four bet preflop, but he's going to take down this pot. Great play by him with the pocket queens. 1k going over to him and we were up $1,000 in the session. We're now at exactly zero break even. We're going to have to do some work here to try to book a W on the session. Last hand of the night, let's see if we can drum up some magic with pocket tens from the button. Under the gun plus one raises it up to $15. The middle position puts in the call. Not putting in a call here with pocket tens. I pop it up to $60. Under the gun plus one and the middle position both put in the call. It's going three ways to the flop with a pretty vulnerable hand, but the flop is pretty good for us. It comes five, seven, eight with two hearts. Interesting play from plus one. He leads out for $55. The middle position puts in the call. Definitely an interesting spot for us with pocket tens here. I think it's likely that the other opponents have a heart draw, a pair plus straight draw, pair plus heart draw, something of that nature. So pocket tens with a 10 of hearts in our hand. We have a lot of equity here. I raise it up to $225. Pretty strong play from me. So even if another opponent puts in the call, we can check the turn behind. We can put more pressure on the turn. We have a lot of options. If we get re-raised, we can pretty confidently just fold our hand and save some money. Plus one gives up his hand and so does middle position. So we're going to take down that hand and finally get back into Profitville up $200. The game ends up breaking. We get out of it for $19.61, a profit of $141 on the session, minus $39 on the day though. We rack up our chips and head to the cage. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.